Hello and welcome. Ancient caskets are a reward focused around the archaeology skill that gives some amazing loot related to the skill and gives the prized guild master Tony's Matic, which goes for an absolute fortune but is incredibly rare, being only obtained from opening the display case upstairs in the archaeology guild's main building after acquiring the shadowy key. Getting your hands on that key is a 1 in 10,000 chance, with a 1 in 1,000 chance to roll for any key, and on that key roll you have a 1 in 10 chance to get the shadowy key. In any of the other failed rolls, you will receive a distorted key, which you do not want to see. So today I bring you loot from 10,000 ancient caskets, which took quite a while i've had this idea for well over a year and well this took over a thousand hours so hopefully you enjoy ancient caskets give an absolute crazy range of loot but the main highlights are the following they are an incredibly good source of archaeology xp from damage artifacts you get and completed tomes which are guaranteed to have one or two completed tomes on every single casket and next, they also give lots of treasure trail related items such as a guaranteed elite clue or a master clue, uh, along with several crystal Triskelion keys, and for some reason they threw in all the godbook pages as well. They also give a hundred archaeology material at a time, you can get several of these from one casket, but that's pretty cool. Uh, they also give blue charms and binding contracts, which to my knowledge is the only way to get binding contracts without manually making them. And lastly, uh, the dragon matic is also possible to get as a reward from this, being only obtainable from this and big game hunter. And of course, a chance at the Tony's matic. Oh, but Mr. Tiger Fang, how did you get 10,000 Tetra Compasses? Well, terribly disturbed Kermit the Frog, uh, let's review all the ways you can currently get Tetra Compass pieces in the game, and then I'll show everything that I did. So method one of obtaining uh, Tetra is probably going to be the first one you ever come across, and that is the 1 in 1.5 thousand chance while excavating essentially anywhere. And uh, a method that I personally didn't do because I haven't done all the mysteries for Orthon is using Dr. Mordot uh, on a research team as one of the consultants. It's actually probably one of the most efficient ways to do it and I kind of wish I did it. And lastly, the method uh, I think most people do and that is doing collections for archaeology. Uh, there's many collections that reward a Tetra Compass piece, it's just figuring out the most efficient one to do, which I will go over now. There are currently 13 collections that award Tetra Compass's pieces, and when farming a collection we are looking for a few things. The first is requiring a small amount of artifacts to complete the collection, so anything that has 9 we're probably just not going to mess with just because it has so many. Second is that the artifacts are coming from the same excavation location uh, while also having a few if not any wasted uh, artifacts, so things like Rum Deal Relics 2. Though it has four, a lot of these require you to go to three or four different, or I think in this case three, locations to collect the artifacts and you will have a bunch of wasted artifacts uh, that you just won't have a collection for without maybe dipping into like a few of these other ones. Lastly, we kind of want something that's low level because the lower level it is, the faster we can fill it up and get the artifacts because uh, lower level artifacts are a lot faster to gain. So out of all that, this one and this one were pretty appealing. The issue with this one specifically is you have to go to multiple different excavation sites uh, and you will have to waste quite a lot of artifacts and it also requires five as well. So the winner out of all this is this one as it only requires five and all five can be gathered from two different locations 
so you don't have to go around and have wasted artifacts. So this is the one we will be doing, and I will show you where those are, uh, kind of how I get there, and just basic stuff like that. So to start this collection, you want to make your way to the Warforge and then always go to the tunnel as it's the fastest way to get to both locations. But the first location, you just enter the door and you're there and you will see these three different excavation sites and these will have the artifacts we're after being the three listed there. It took me about three minutes and 33 seconds to get one artifact at this location. But if you AFK more, you're going to spend more time here. So I'd say it's safe to say this takes about four minutes per artifact. So on average, you're probably spending 10 to 12 minutes per collection in that one location. So for the second location, you are going to enter in at the exact same point. But instead of going through the door, you're going to make your way all the way over to this location. Now the great thing about this location is there's only two artifacts. Uh, the bad thing about this is each artifact will take a little bit longer to get than the past location because this is a higher level excavation site. Now at both of these locations you can go dry on a specific artifact, but overall it typically works itself out. This is because artifacts do have a bad luck mitigator, so if you haven't got one for a while you are more likely to get uh, the one you're missing but end of the day you can also use the fixate spell which guarantees an artifact of the player's choice from an excavation this resets daily and you get three of them after acquiring the archaeology master outfit so that's what i did to even everything out towards the end of it this was my preset during almost like probably like 99 percent of the gathering of all the material required so you have the basic full master archaeology outfit, 120 cape. I use aematic time and space. This could be improved to use the Tony's Matic. There is also my current book slot is the Brooch of the Gods. Uh, you could use Scripture of Bic and charge it. It just costs a lot and I am not after clues right now. Also, I'm including these in my inventory. This isn't something I would normally use, but if you have them, the high spec uh, monocule is great here. Uh, it's fairly useful. Cosmic accumulator, great here for any archaeology uh, archaeology activity in general. Ancient Elven Shard, this is to get my prayer back up from Imp Sold 3. Binding Contracts. Uh, water Fiend, so the Water Fiend Familiar will actually make a huge difference long term. It can duplicate even your relics that you get. Uh, and then scrolls for that. Uh, I use the Premier Artifact Boost, specifically the one that has a 50% chance to act as a porter. I did this as a daily for a year plus. Uh, and then obviously the required like Auto Screener and porters and grace the elves and super restore to restore this there are other things you could do to have a better setup for this as well uh i have a power burst of opportunity in my inventory this is something i actually didn't utilize because i did most of my stuff super afk but this is great uh it's, it should be used on cooldown they're dirt cheap but there's one other thing that could could be used that I didn't use because the cost worth re versus reward wasn't worth it and that is the flow state you get a 20% increase to archaeology excavation precision at the ex expense of not receiving any soil which means you lose a bunch and I mean a bunch of free supplies or materials I mean for repairing the artifacts so yeah, and I also have obviously all the upgrades within the Archaeology Guild. So that was my setup during all this. Again, uh, you can improve my times by getting Toadies Matic, using Power Burst Opportunity, using the high spec Manacle, and having the flow state active as a relic. Those are all things I didn't use when I was timing it. 
but are options if you feel they are worth it to you or if you have a Tony's. After getting your artifacts, go ahead and repair them. You can repair about 700 an hour with an average probably around 500 if you're AFKing it. Now for turning in, uh, first thing you want to do is configure your master archaeology outfit to teleport to the generals for turning in the collection quickly. Create a preset uh, that has all your loaded artifacts that you're going to be turning in. So you're going to want to do five of each. Uh, once you have that set up, quick teleport. Find uh, Warface. Turn in collections, finish, deep sea fishing teleport, hub teleport, bank, load, and you're done. Uh, this is by far the fastest teleport to bank at, so uh, it makes a pretty substantial difference in time. And just some numbers on this as well. So inventory five collection takes 15 seconds, so that's four of those a minute. It's about 1200 collections an hour that can be turned in at max efficiency. Each collection will give the Tetra piece that we're after, along with 6,504 chronotes. Those chronotes will pay for all the materials that are needed to repair the artifact. Now that you have all the required pieces to make the unpowered Tetra, that's what we're going to go ahead and do. This has to be done at an archaeology bench. And uh, this does get a wee bit expensive. So you'll see on screen, uh, but this will cost about 1.3 million each for each key, granting 2,230 XP. If we're doing this, create a preset if you're doing a large quantity like I am, seven at a time, uh, and you can create about 600 or so an hour. And then after creating those, you want to go to the monolith in the middle of the archeology span main camp. And uh, this will take about 10 seconds per one, uh, it's not the most AFK thing, but it is pretty easy. But yeah, you will have a really full inventory, and if you're doing as many as me, uh, you want to make sure you have a very clean bank before going to this, because they are no longer stackable at this point. And it really is worth uh, just going ahead and doing them all at once. Um, and I'll explain that later, but yeah, at this point, it's just making sure you have a very clean bank, emptied out bank, so you can put everything in it if you're doing as many as I am. Congrats, you officially have zero bank space. Uh, now to get into solving all of these. Before going and trying to solve them, uh, if you do more than 100 at a time, I would spend some time just organizing them. When I say organizing them, uh, what I did was I stood in RD Bank and was checking each one of the compasses and where they were pointing and then grouping them based on which section of the map they were pointing at, uh, going clockwise around and splitting them into four different sections. And then separating them inside my bank like so. The only tip I have for this part really is just do whatever you want to group them out. Like however you want to group them, go ahead and do that. Uh, but make sure when you're depositing and withdrawing them that you withdraw one at a time and you deposit them one at a time. Because I learned the, the hard way that the bank does some really weird stuff with this item and when you try and grab more than one, it will start randomly plucking them out at random and you'll have some that are from a completely different tab and you'll have to start over. The reason why you do this is because there are 71 possible locations and if you split them out into chunks you can dramatically increase the chance of getting multiple in the same location in one inventory requiring you not to move whatsoever. I did some calculations on this and this saved about 30% of my time solving them when comparing the number I was doing with just doing an inventory at a time without organizing it, I was completing about 30 to 35% more an hour when I just spent some time organizing it. So it's definitely worth it. Here's a clip of me doing five in a single spot without moving, just showing you how nice it can be to just organize slightly. So this happens a lot more often. Also tip here, if you click the bottom one in your inventory every single time, 
Uh, essentially, it'll use the one higher up in the priority of your inventory, so you can just uh, kind of check your whole inventory by just doing the last one first. So, now it's time to finally solve these and start getting those chests piled up in your inventory. So, each casket takes about 35 to 36 seconds to dig up, so that's about 60 ticks, and the tier of the Matic does not increase the speed at which you gather these either. So, it really is just solving it like a clue scroll step. You'll see in my top left hand corner I'm using Alt 1. If you don't know where Alt 1 is, it's a kind of. It's the only approved helper really that we have for RuneScape 3. And essentially what you do is download it. It's a third party app uh, that doesn't directly interact with the game and it just kind of reads your screen. Without it, you do get naturally good at it, but I mean, I'd rather just have this and have a better idea than making one small stupid mistake and have to walk all the way around somewhere else or teleporting again. So highly recommend Alt-1 if you're doing anything related to clue scrolls in general, uh, which this is a direct copy of a clue scroll step. So, And you can kind of see in the background, there's a few things I'm doing. So one is I'm constantly keeping my inventory pretty topped up. Uh, this just increases my chances of having multiple steps in the same location. And again, start with the bottom and work your way up. I'll get into some of the numbers that I had for uh, starting out. So my very, very first hour I did 47. And then as I progress, my top hour was 62 Tetras completed in a single hour. Which is pretty good. Uh, it could definitely be improved. I'd say 65 to 70 is probably the cap that anyone could do, but people could prove me wrong on that very easily. My average with kind of like the prep bank where I organized it was probably like 58-ish. Uh, it was getting the last few that was really hard. After that, like towards the end, I did some casual hours. Casual being defined as didn't do any prep or organization at the bank. Just charged it and did it. Uh, my best hour of that was 48, and my average was probably like 43. Uh, it really got slow because there's a lot more teleporting around and like none of them were in the same location. Just goes to show it's really worth organizing it the more you have. So, but now we get to go to the fun part and go into the loot. So, my master plan for this was to do 500 chests at a time and do it 20 times using the beta. This did have one major flaw though, and that is you can only resync your account once per hour. So this made it a minimum of a 20 hour grind. So I set a timer for one hour and proceeded to loot 500 chests at a time, logging every single loot in a spreadsheet. And at the end of each opening session, I would also trade over all of my loot to my alt who was also just sitting in the beta but would not ever be resynced with the live and would maintain all of that tradable loot. During the downtime when I really couldn't play any RuneScape 3 while I was doing this, I was making really good use of it and playing old school RuneScape's uh, leagues, which is something I planned on doing anyway, so it really worked out for timing. I will post a full video of me looting. <laughs> 20 times. Uh, it'll be linked in the description at some point shortly after posting this video. But let's just get into the results. And this is what all of the loot came out to. So we had 107 Dragon Maddocks. We didn't have a single Shadowy Key, uh, but we had 250-ish of each page, which is kind of crazy. And then... Thousands. I think the most that we have of any specific resource is this 418k gold rune. Uh, but man, this is a crazy cool looking loot tab. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put this in a spreadsheet and see what everything would be worth. So after adding up all of the tradable loot and doing some number crunching, it came to a total of... Drum roll, please. 28.6 bill, which works out to almost 3 million a chest, which is pretty nuts to me. To dig a little deeper into the loot itself, as I said in the live commentary, 
I sadly didn't get to Tony's Matic in 10k, which is just at drop rate. I did get 107 Dragon Matics, which made for quite a bit, and is slightly over drop rate. Nearly 20 bill came from archaeology materials, which is a pretty big chunk, uh, and only 30 mil roughly coming from pages you get. And nearly 2.1 bill from miscellaneous loot, such as onyx dust, hydrix bolt tips, uh, salvage, and crystal keys and seeds. This is what it looks like by percentage, if you're curious. With nearly 70% of the value for, of the chest coming from archaeology materials, followed by 22% from the Dragon Maddox and 7% from miscellaneous loot, and only 1% from those damn pages. Even if I did get a single Tony's, it really wouldn't have changed the percentage to be that big of a change, which really goes to show just how much money is from the materials that you get from this. Also, I'd like to state, uh, I never got a single 100k coin drop, so I'm just assuming it doesn't actually exist from Ancient Caskets, and I will have to update the wiki on that. Now, let's talk about untradeable loot. Let's start with the saddest. I got a total of 11 distorted keys, which is depressing to say the least. You also get a bunch of archaeology related boosting items. Uh, it seemed about 75% chance per chest, as I got nearly 7.5k of each. I did get 10,000 clues, which uh, would be weird if I didn't get that, as it's 100% chance to either get an elite or master. Pretty straightforward there, I did get slightly more elites, but it's 50-50 chance. Based on the information available from Clue Chasers, each elite is worth about 4 mil, and each master is worth 6 mil when solved and opened. So you get 5 mil worth of potential value from each casket by solving the respective clue scroll that comes with it. I got 771 full Triskelion keys, or 1173 if you include the 1206 pieces I got. So a full Triskelion piece key, about one every 10 caskets is roughly what I got. I got exactly 100 money tree seeds. Uh, each seed is worth about 1.2 to 1.3 mil each when harvest. But they are pretty rare, being the same drop rate as Dragon Maddox of 1 in 100, it seems. As I got even less money tree seeds than I got Dragon Maddox, which was pretty crazy. Now for blue charms and binding contracts. So I got 78.7 thousand blue charms and binding contracts. These do drop together in a 1 to 1 ratio, so you just get a crazy amount of charms and binding contracts. To put that in perspective, you could get 120 million XP in summoning on double XP with that amount of charms, and would be around 3.5 bill worth of binding contracts. If you converted them all to Blood Reavers, it'd be nearly 10 bill. Uh, binding contracts are quite expensive to make, so this is this could be a pretty big save for anyone that plans on doing Ripper Demons or Blood Reavers. I got a total of nearly 28,000 artifacts, and yes, I manually counted every single one, uh, and I got 15,000 completed tomes. You can do a lot of cool math with these, and I did just that. At 120 Archaeology, if I were to convert all of the artifacts into XP by repairing them, I would get over 400 million XP on average. And the tomes would give nearly 1.3 billion XP in total, which means combined 10,000 ancient caskets would give you 1.7 billion XP in archaeology, or about 175k experience for each casket. So there's another thing I want to mention but not dig into too much because it gets pretty complicated and pretty specific is there are ways to make money from the artifacts themselves. This includes repairing them and turning them in for more collections which will give you chronotes and other rewards. 
the Wikipedia does have all this listed out on which ones are profitable and which ones aren't. There's two ways to make money from artifacts, and that's turning in for the collections themselves for the Chronotes. And then you can also disassemble them for historic components, classic components, time warp components, and vintage components. These are all used for invention, specifically perks. And a lot of these artifacts can be disassembled, converted into crates, which are sellable, and then uh, sold for profit. So I just want to mention that, that there is other ways to make money from these artifacts, but I don't want to dig into it because it's very hard to calculate that, but it exists. Whew. Okay, I know that was a lot of information, but we're almost done. With all that done and over with, that means the average casket will have an additional 5.4 million GP available in additional loot, mainly coming from completing those extra clue scrolls you get. Uh, here's another pie chart for you because two was enough of what that looks like percentage-wise compared to the other loot. So in 10,000 ancient caskets, this would work out to 53 billion and 688 million in average potential extra loot that you could get from cl completing all of those clue scrolls and everything else. Uh, it's about damn time. Finally, time to break down everything in this video. Each casket takes about 1 hour and 17 minutes to 1 hour and 48 minutes to create and solve from scratch, just depending on how efficient you are with solving and how AFK you are while gathering the artifacts. Assuming that you break even creating the Tetra through the materials you gather and the chronos you get from turning in the collection, you would profit 2.9 million in tradable loot per casket. With an additional 5.4 mil being available from clue scrolls and other untradables such as binding contracts. On top of that, you also average 175,000 XP per casket. That works out to 2 million GP an hour, 0.7 elite or master an hour, and about 160k XP an hour with some extra bits and bobs. Man, that brings me to the end of the video. Uh, thank you for making this far. This video took way too damn long to make. So if you like these type of videos, subscribe, like it, uh, share it with friends, anyone that does Tetras and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, till next time, bye. Oh, but Mr. Tiger Fang, how did you get 10,000 Tetra Compasses? Well, <laughs> terribly disturbed Kermit the Frog, uh, let's review all the ways you can currently get Tetra Compass pieces in the game, and then I'll sh- I don't care what anyone says, this is funny to me. This is dumb as shit, but it's funny.